to him. So he sees beneath the surface, he sees something of the inner nature of the beings around him and the whole structure of the world that he's in. And he has power in that world because of that knowledge. He has power to stop the bullets and fly around and do all the stuff that he does. And what does he do? He fights Smith, Agent Smith, uh, without even thinking about it now, right? He's just transformed his thinking, so he's at another level. He fights Smith, <coughs> he dives into Smith, and transforms Smith from the inside out in this sort of explosion of light. Well, we'll hopefully see how this comes together. There's a lot of little pieces. So, Neo, as a, uh, an archetype of the human being, is, in a certain way, really represented... Um, Neo himself, Thomas Anderson, is really the will. And that's significant because the thing that does the transforming and itself gets transformed is the will. How does the will get transformed? Well, it has to work with the other aspects of the human being. What are those? You can imagine them as the feeling realm and the thinking realm. So the will is the element of us which is very active in our limbs, our hands, our feet. The rhythmic system of the heart and the lungs is very much associated with our feeling and our feeling life. Whereas our thinking obviously is associated with the head and the nervous system. So Thomas Anderson, uh, Neo in disguise, in his asleep form, is the will. In the first movie, he's not a real bright guy. Um, his, in fact, his response to Morpheus telling him that you've been living a dream world is just stumbling around and vomiting, right? That's his <laughs> response, his, his action response to this knowledge that he gets. Whereas, um, where do you imagine that the feeling and the thinking come in? What characters seem to represent those? Any ideas? Say more. And which would be which? Trinity's feeling. Trinity's feeling. So the will is Neo. The feeling is Trinity. <coughs> thinking. Actually, I'm going to, well, these should be reversed, but don't worry about it. It's more here. So, this is now a single, this is this representative of a single being. And what we have is Trinity playing the role of feeling. Now, the way that shows up is that, for example, Trinity is on the, so first of all, the very first scene of the entire movie, The Matrix, is Heart of the City Motel. And in the heart of the city is Trinity. Trinity is sitting there, uh, typing away her computer, and then she gets attacked, runs away. She's very scared. She's actually on the run from the agent. Nobody can defeat agents at this point. And she dives through the window, uh, expecting the agent to be there, and she's got her guns ready. And she's actually, in this moment, so full of fear, in a way, that she's unable to simply make a decision or an action. She's caught in the middle, in the fear. She has to tell herself from her thinking, get up, get up. And then she actually can, connects the will and the thinking together and actually goes on and eventually escapes. Also, when at the end of the first movie, Trinity is uh, bringing Neo back, she says, I'm, I'm not afraid anymore. So her, she's something with her fear, which is representative of what's happening in her heart and her feet, in the feeling life of the human being. This is the one way that we experience the world, right? Whereas Morpheus, uh, the thinking, is a being who himself is striking for his bald head, right? He's caught in the top floor or the upper floors of the building called Metacortex, which is where Thomas Anderson used to work, um, essentially doing coding for the Matrix itself because he was a programmer. And now Morpheus is bound hand and foot He's leaning forward, he's just ahead, and he's got all these little probes because Smith needs to get inside his mind. And inside his mind are codes design and all that stuff. So thinking is represented by Morpheus, who then is able to break his bonds and jump out of the window. But on the way, he gets shot in the leg, which is a bit representative of what happens if the thinking is not connected to the feeling and the willing. You're lame, in a way, right? Your actions aren't going to be fully coherent. So he's got, a, he's got a, uh, a wound in his will, in his legs, and is jumping out of the window and therefore has to be saved by the representative of the will, who is Neo. And how does Neo do that? He takes his hand and grabs Morpheus. 
And Morpheus, in a way, is, is the head. So he's, in a way, we can imagine this uh, as Neo's hand towards the head, the gesture of the head, coming from the metacortex, beyond the cortex. And who is beyond the cortex? Well, the neocortex, which is the seat of our rational uh, being with a self-consciousness in terms of what cognitive science is about. So we've got these three aspects all playing together, and it happens very clearly in all three movies, and the way that that works is that at the end of the first one, Neo, the will, he doesn't transform his will in the first movie, nor does he transform his feeling. He does transform his thinking, and that is represented by the act of saving Morpheus. So he saves Morpheus. This is a, a pictorial expression of the spiritual scientific idea of the transformation of thinking. That leads him to being able to see the code. To, he dies as, the, as, as Thomas Anderson, comes back as the one, can see now the green code of the matrix. This seeing the green code can be linked to a capacity that we could call imagination. Which, for those of you who are familiar with spiritual science, know that that's a specific term that has a definite meaning to it. So it's not, our, our, it's not fantasy. It's mo- it will, can be called moral imagination. So now this imagination is what is present in Neo, having transformed his thinking. From there, in the second movie, we have now the next archetype, the next level, which is that he needs to meet up with the feeling mind, right? So he needs to now work with Trinity. So in the second movie, we have Neo coming to the rescue of Trinity. He's, he is, uh, if you remember, he's in with the architect, this mysterious being, and the architect presents him with two doors. And Neo decides to take the door that leads to a single human being, the being Trinity, and therefore, according to the architect, the destruction of all other life, all other human beings. The other door would lead to the salvation, quote, of all the human beings, except for the, Z- the people in Zion. All the people inside the matrix would still live. So Neo is presented with essentially 99.9% of humanity, or Trinity. And he chooses Trinity. Seemingly, the architect knows that that is the case, because he can discern the underneath structure, because he himself is a unique kind of a being. And what happens is that Neo chooses the individual, because the connection that he has to Trinity through the feeling life is stronger than the abstraction of the rest of humanity. You have to read this sort of metaphorically. So rather than these three being separate beings, this is a single being we're talking about. So he has to save his own feeling life. He has to integrate that. He can't, he can't leave that out at the expense of the other, uh, hum- the other as- asleep humanities. In other words, he's going to make the choice to become more aware. So he saves Trinity, he, you know, she flies up, and what does he do? How does he save her? Well, Trinity has been shot in the heart, right? The heart is wounded. He has to heal the wound, which he does by using his imagination to see the green code, reaches in again with his hand, pulls out the bullet, and then reaches in again and restarts her heart. So he, he resuscitates her, and she then begins to... Uh, respond by breathing, right? So her rhythmic life comes back. She breathes and her heart now beats. So she is, she is now um, transformed in, a, in another way. So the feeling is now integrated from this moment onwards. That also shows up in the end of the second matrix, which is the clip I showed, where Neo is being, you know, being chased by the sentinels. And he says, he turns around, he says, something's different. I can feel them. And so his feeling life is transformed. What does that allow him to do? He can reach out his hand. Again, all of this is what the will does. And he's able to stop them, right? This is now in the, quote, real world. So this capacity of imagination is, in a certain way, a passive capacity that allows information uh, from archetypes to be present to us in a living way because we've done some kind of spiritual work. Now, through this next capacity... He has inspiration. And with inspiration, he can actually connect with the other beings more directly. He can do so at a level that is beyond the purely and sort of